This short video clip will address the topic of scales of measurement. Scales of measurement is a very important concept to understand as one begins to examine statistical analysis procedures. A solid understanding of the scales of measurement will aid immeasurably in running statistical analysis and understanding and interpreting the output generated from running statistical analyses. In this short video, I will define the key attributes of the four scales of measurement along with providing examples of variables that reflect each scale of measurement. I will then discuss the hierarchy of the scales of measurement followed by a quick overview of how the levels of measurement are assigned and applied in a statistical package such as SPSS. I will then present a table depicting the alignment between a few basic statistical tests and associated scales of measurement. Finally, I will conclude with a concise summary. Let's begin the video tutorial. Quantitative research uses variables. A variable is a measurement of something that holds at least two distinct values across participants or units of analysis in the study. As such, variables are the basic currency of research. Any discussion of variables must include attributes of variables. A key attribute of variables is the scale of measurement that distinguishes the type of variables. The four basic scales of measurement are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Let's examine each scale of measurement a bit more. A nominal variable, as the title suggests, is simply a naming variable. For example, color might be used as a variable in a study. This variable might have three levels, such as red, green, and blue. In this example, a numerical code one for red, two for green, and three for blue has been assigned to each level of the variable. However, this numerical code is not intended for mathematical calculations. It is merely assigned for identification or naming purposes. Numerical codes are normally assigned to nominal variables so that statistical software packages can conduct frequency counts for each level of the variable. For example, a study might include 10 participants whose favorite color is red, 12 participants whose favorite color is green, and 24 participants whose favorite color is blue. Notice, although each level of the variable is assigned a numerical value, it is still a categorical variable. A key concept in nominal variables is that it is mutually exclusive and exhaustive. That is, each unit of analysis in the study can only belong to one group. Other examples of nominal variables might be gender with two levels, male and female, political affiliation with three levels, Republican, Democrat, or Independent. Take a moment to think about other variables that are measured on a nominal scale of measurement. I am sure you can think of a plethora of variables that are measured on a nominal scale. Let's now address the ordinal scale of measurement. The next level of measurement, the ordinal scale, adds the requirement of ordered attributes in addition to the mutual exclusive and exhaustive requirements. In other words, the ordinal attributes can be rank ordered. For example, you more than likely have taken a survey using a Likert scale where the possible responses might have been as such. One equals unlikely, two equals very unlikely, and three equals highly unlikely. Notice 
Each subsequent response represents a higher level of the variable of concern, but there is no way to know exactly how different the responses are in value. Ordinal scales are very subjective and what represents very unlikely for one respondent might not be the same for another respondent. This is a very important concept to understand. However, ordinal scale of measurement can be used in mathematical computations, unlike the nominal scale. For example, you can calculate the average response score Take a moment to identify other variables that you think are measured on a nominal scale of measurement. I'm sure you can think of a host of variables that are measured on a nominal scale of measurement. Now, let's address the interval scale of measurement. The interval level, like the ordinal scale, has variable attributes that are also ordered. However, in addition to ordinal ranking, the spacing or values between interval variable attributes is equal. For example, most basic statistics texts use the example variable of temperature in degrees Fahrenheit to explain the attribute of equal spacing. For example, one can not only indicate that 40 degrees is more than 20 degrees, but it is also valid to say that the distance between 60 degrees and 80 degrees is the same as the distance between 80 degrees and 100 degrees. However, a key distinction of the interval scale of measurement is that it does not contain a true zero value. Let me explain. A true zero value indicates no existence of the attribute. As we know, zero degrees is not an indication of a lack of temperature. It simply means it is extremely cold. I am sure you can think of a plethora of variables that are measured on an interval scale of measurement. Let's now address the last scale of measurement, the ratio scale. The final measurement level, the ratio level, differs from the interval level only in that it contains a true zero value. As such, the ratio scale of measurement can be expressed as ratios. For example, dollars, expressed in U.S. currency, is an example of a ratio level variable. One making an annual income of 40,000 US dollars can be said to have an annual income twice that of someone making 20,000 US dollars. More so, it is possible to have an annual income of zero dollars. The ratio scale of measurement provides the most detailed information of the four levels of measurement and allow for the most complex research questions to be addressed. I am sure you can think of a plethora of variables that are measured on a ratio scale of measurement. Let's take a quick moment to revisit the hierarchy of the four scales of measurement. The highest level is the ratio level of measurement, again, which has the attribute of a true zero value. Next, the interval level has attributes of equal and meaningful distances, but lacks a true zero attribute. Then we have the ordinal level of measurement that has the attribute of rank order. Finally, the lowest level of measurement is the nominal level that has the attribute of name only. This slide reflects an SPSS screen capture of the variable view in SPSS. The variable name is provided in the first column under the blue arrow number one. The scale of measurement column below the red arrow reflects the scale of measurement assigned by the researcher. Take a moment to look at the sex underscore professor variable 
that reflects the gender of the professor, which can be male or female. Notice how it has been identified as a nominal or categorical scale of measurement, as each participant will be in one category or the other. Also, notice the three colored circles before the word nominal. This is another indication that the variable is a nominal scale of measurement. The age variable is assigned a scale level of measurement. The scale level of measurement in SPSS is assigned to all variables with an interval or ratio scale of measurement. Notice the lined ruler before the word scale. This is an indication in SPSS that the variable is a scale level variable. It is important to note that SPSS uses the term scale for interval and ratio level variables. You will not see the words interval and ratio. Let's now focus on the rank variable. Notice it is expressed as an ordinal scale of measurement. This variable obviously has some ranking order of the professors. In this case, one equals assistant professor, two equals associate professor, and three equals full professor. However, it is important to note that this variable can also be expressed as a nominal scale of measurement if the researcher's intent is to use the variable to place the professors in one category or another rather than conceptualize them in ranking order. The key point here is that the conceptualization of the researcher determines the appropriate scale of measurement. This is an important point to remember. Be sure to practice inserting and assigning variables the scale of measurement using SPSS practice exercises. This slide depicts a table identifying some of the basic statistical tests and their associated scales of measurement for the independent and dependent variables. This table should be extremely helpful to you when deciding which variables to use for a specific analysis. Be sure to refer to this table when needed in addition to your course text. In this video, I have defined the attributes of the four scales of measurement and provided examples of each. The highest level is the ratio level of measurement, again, which has an attribute of a true zero value. Next, the interval ratio has attributes of equal and meaningful distances but lacks the attribute of a true zero value. The ordinal level of measurement has the attribute of rank order. Finally, the lowest level of measurement is the nominal level that has the attribute of name only. I then discussed how the variables and their scales of measurement are applied in SPSS. I pointed out that the nominal scale is reflected by a set of colored circles next to the measurement name. The ordinal scale is represented by a colored bar graph increasing in height from left to right, representing rank order. The interval and ratio scales are defined as scale variables. Remember, you will not see the names interval and ratio in the SPSS measurement column. A helpful table was provided to show the alignment between basic statistical tests, variables used in the test, and their associated scales of measurement. Please be sure to read more on scales of measurement in your course text, as this is a very important concept to understand as you embark upon your exciting journey through statistics. I wish you the best.